So hello all, welcome to the module number two of the Facebook marketing course. My name is Pranav Kale and I am going to be your trainer for this particular module. The name of the module, as you can see, is Facebook pages and posts best practices. So what is the goal of this particular module? The goal is to understand all the features. So basically use all the features that are available to us on our Facebook page. And just to break down the agenda. So these are a few points that we'll be covering in this particular module. So the first is why Facebook page? So how can a Facebook page basically help a business or a brand? Then the post format. So what are the different types of formats? What are the different ways in which a brand can express itself on Facebook? So how can a brand make its presence engaging with a variety of posts? Yeah, then the preferred audience, you know, how can the brand or how can the page basically reach out to the relevant audiences? Then page insights. So insights is basically the number part, the reporting part. So how do we use the data that Facebook provides us and how do we optimize our marketing initiatives on the platform? The fifth point is boosting posts. So increasing the reach of our Facebook posts by boosting them. So this is where Facebook ad advertisements come into the picture. And then the last is other page features like ratings, reviews, call to actions, etc. So let's get started. So, you know, why, why do we need a Facebook page or in other words, how can a Facebook page help you? So to reach people, we obviously need to get in touch with them. We obviously need to create awareness on the platforms where they spend their time. So it's, it's all about attention and people spend a lot of time on Facebook and people spend a lot of time on Instagram. So a bulk of the time that they use to that they spend on, on social media or digitally, a bulk of the time has been taken by Facebook and the bulk of the time is taken by Instagram as well. And now with the introduction of the audience network, so the audience network has also been added to Facebook, which means that you can reach out to, to, the, to the prospects, to the users through the Facebook audience network family, which consists of various websites and applications. That also is an added asset because users also spend a significant amount of time on audience network. So this combination basically makes the Facebook advertising platform very, very powerful. And in general, the Facebook marketing is strengthened because of having because because Facebook basically has access to all these three entities where users spend a lot of time. So Facebook has 1.65 billion monthly active users. Instagram has 500 million active users and audience network basically consists of thousands of various applications and websites. So now 20% of the total time that is spent on mobile has been taken up by Facebook and Instagram. So that's a huge chunk of time of the, of the total time that is spent online or that is spent on mobile. Yeah. And also audience network enables Facebook to reach out to additional 6% people. So now how do we increase our presence online? So basically we can increase our presence online for free. Why? Because creating a Facebook page is not something for which we have to pay. So let's, let's create a, let's create a Facebook page. So now I'm going to go to my Facebook profile and I'll show you all how to create a Facebook page. So let me go to my home feed right now. So there are, there are three tabs open. I'll be using all three of them as we go ahead. So on the home field, there is a drop down at the top right corner from where you log out. Yes. So you go on create page, click on it. And when you do that, you will see six options. These are basically the types of pages that you can create. So you can create a local business or place. So if you have a brick and mortar store, 
if it's a if it's a local business you can go with this option if it's a company organization or institution you go with this if it's a brand or a product if if your business fits into this category you go with this then cause and communities if 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 your initiative is for a cause you can go with this entertainment so if if, if entertainment is something which which your business is all about go with this and then artist band or public figure so these are a few options that facebook provides us now depending on the option that we choose there will be a few additional customizations that will be that will be provided by facebook which will be pertaining to only that particular type so for example if you go with local business or play, place facebook will allow you to enter the address of the place the the timings of your local business or place and such things so each of these options will have a certain degree of customization so out of these six options let's select the brand or product option in this particular case so i have to name it so i'll just name it let's say pranav's business yeah uh, as, as a sample business and i also select a category so i can select from different categories so right from cars to electronics furniture pet supplies could be anything all right so for this example let me go with something simple which is brand so i'll select brand and i'll click on get started so now you will see that the the facebook page has immediately been created all right now here is the here is the section where you can include the logo so this is the profile picture and this is the cover picture so the the general trend or the general general norm is that in the profile picture you insert the logo of the business and the cover photo can be can be of your choice cover photo basically allows you to express your page's identity yeah and also you are expected or it's it's a good practice to add a short description to the page so that when people or when the users come to your page they'll understand what this page is all about so that is all as far as creation of a facebook page is concerned you can start rolling out your page or you can start the the initiative of your page of of putting out content of of putting out a relevant profile photo of uh, putting a cover photo immediately by following this these steps right so what all do you do after after the page has been created so basically you add business info to your page that helps customer discover you and see what your business is all about so be as elaborate as descriptive as you can when you do this because people should get a complete idea of what the business is all about it also makes your page more searchable and consider featuring other details that are that are associated with your page so like website if if opening hours and contact info is is applicable for you then description of your business services products menus directions and more now like i mentioned already you have to display the best photos that you have so put your best photos forward through your profile picture so that is the logo then also your cover photo yeah so photo show customers what they can expect from your business so they are basically telling a story about your business so please ensure that the photos are of high quality and they are going in line with what the business actually stands for use a photo of your business logo or other images that will interest your customers and get their attention then you can also create a facebook shop and a list of facebook services if it is applicable for your business so let me just show you how so when you go to the settings of your page and when you go to edit page there is an option where you can add a tab so basically you can add the shop tab and the services tab if it is applicable for your business to the shop tab you can display the various products that you have to offer and to the services tab you can basically highlight the services that you offer including these details on your facebook page makes it easy for the customer or the user to understand what your business is all about 
The next topic that we want to cover in this module are the various post formats. So Facebook basically allows us to create different types of posts and we are going to take a look at how we can use different formats to make our page more engaging. So typically there are three types of posts. There is a text post, there is a photo or a video post which you can also call as media post and a third is a link post. Now what is a text post? Text post is basically a post which has only text in it. There is no other attached media or link in it. So pure simple status, text status update comes under text posts. The media posts or the photo video posts basically consist of the photos. So if you, if you are attaching a photo or a video or even a GIF, all, all sorts of media come under the second category of posts. So when you include some text and attach some kind of a media with it, it becomes photo or a video post. And the third is a link post. Now what is a link post? A link post is typically a post where you include an external link, typically a link which, which redirects people away from Facebook. And uh, when, when the person clicks on that link, the, 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 that typical person, that, that typical user is redirected to that particular page. Now, as far as different types of photos and video formats are considered, these are a few formats. So the first is upload photos and videos. Second is create photo album, then create a photo video carousel, slideshow, and the last is create a canvas. Now, what is a video format? So as the name suggests, video format is, is that format, is that type of a post which basically allows us to upload a video on the page. So video can be recorded and it can be uploaded on the page. Video format also allows us to, to incorporate a thumbnail with a play icon. So just to show you a few glimpses of how a video actually looks like. So now why, why do we use videos? So as we all know, video is a pretty powerful way of telling a story. It's a, it's a really engaging way of telling a story. So having a video, having videos on the page keeps the audience engaged. It allows the brand to tell a story in a really, really powerful way. Also, now videos can play with the sound off. So you must have observed this that as you scroll down your newsfeed, the videos start auto playing with the sound off so that also is an added advantage because the video is then being viewed by more number of people and also like i mentioned you can choose the thumbnail that first appears the thumbnail will basically give an idea to the audience of what the video is all about now videos like i mentioned they also autoplay with sound off so we can create videos or we need to create videos which which also provide a good experience to the viewer with even when the sound is not playing. So one way in which we can do that is by including subtitles. Having subtitles ensures that the audience still understands the meaning of the video even if the sound is off. Second important tip is to note that do not publish any external link on the Facebook page that is not really recommended. Instead, you should upload the video on Facebook separately. So upload a video to Facebook instead of posting a link an external link of the video. Then the next is slideshow format and it looks something like this. So by definition, what is a slideshow? A slideshow is just a, uh, you know, it's, it's just a sequence of different images put together. Yeah, so a frame that uses images which may or may not include text that automatically animates with the choices of your transition. So that this is how a slideshow format actually looks like. Now, why do we use slideshow? So keep audiences engaged even when they don't have high enough bandwidth for video. So this is one of the one of the most important advantages of having a slideshow format. The video format sometimes can take significant bandwidth, right? But if the audience does not have enough bandwidth for video, the slideshow format, which basically consists of images, is a lighter format and can be consumed by the audience in a, in a lesser bandwidth as well. Secondly, it is easy and quick to build because all you need is images. It, it allows it, us to display products 
short tutorials or narratives so these these types of stories can be told through the slideshow then we can also reach people with slow internet connections right so such as we can we can reach people when uh, who are using mobile in remote locations as well then the next is the carousel format now a carousel format is is a very interesting format it, it basically allows you to upload multiple images you know it's like a it's like a series of detailed cards and every card has image text and description rotating in a sequence so as you can see this is the carousel experience and then why why do we use carousel ads because they give an audience opportunity to choose what they want to interact with from multiple products so there will be multiple products or there will be multiple stories multiple cards and the audience can choose which card or which product they want to interact with carousel ad format or carousel format is an excellent format to tell different stories so we can actually build up a story why because there are, there are series of cards so we can you know start the story with the first card and then go on progressively telling a story and the story can then end on the last card and then it can also showcase one long image or a panorama so you can be creative with these carousel you can show one long image so different images which are interconnected with each other or in other words it is you can you can show a panoramic you can give the audience a panoramic experience now this is the canvas format what is a canvas format so canvas starts with a small image with a learn more tab that leads to a full screen immersive experience so it's like a comprehensive elaborate experience that you can have it basically combines image video and interactive gestures like press swipe etc the format is also mobile optimized for phones and tablets now why why do we use canvas so it like i mentioned it's an immersive mini site like experience so you're like you know building a mini site or a micro site in which the audience can tap they can you know pan they can swipe they can explore you know different aspects of the canvas without actually leaving facebook so make the most of the exciting video copy and images when the audience is on mobile by using these this canvas format now what are the diff other other ways in which you can make your page engaging so the one way in which you can do that is by pinning a post to the top right so a page basically allows you to pin a post to the top so i'll show you how that is done so when you are on the page you can select this option and click on pin to top of page when you do that this post will appear at the top this pin to the top option can be used to pin the most important post on the page to the top so that when the audience visits your page they can get to see the that particular post as the first post secondly you can also boost post you can boost the post so that the good quality post reach to a wider audience and then secondly use the most effective post format to create a right engagement with your customers so out of all the post formats that we saw which ones can we use which ones are the most effective and how can we use them to create a right engagement with our customers there on mobile you can make live videos from your page as well so these videos are live videos they are real time videos and uh, research has shown that people respond to live videos in a in a much better way than income as compared to the to the recorded ones so yeah, this is a question which format is easy to create for your business and it will it will excite your target audience so it depends on a lot of parameters like what are the resources that you have what are the what are the images that you have what are the videos that you have and basically what kind of what kind of a format will basically excite your target audience preferred audience now before you use this option 
of uh, preferred audience, you have to enable it first. So let me show you how you can enable this option by going to the settings section of my page. So when you go to settings and you go to the general settings, this option has to be enabled. So if it is, if this box is unchecked, you have to check it and save changes. This option will basically allow you to enable this, enable the audience optimizations for your posts. Now through this option, basically you can choose the specific audience that you want to reach out to through your content. So you can use up to 16 predefined tags to describe the interest of the audience you want to reach. And what happens because of this is that Facebook tries to show your content to the audience which fits into those filters that you have used. So Facebook will show your post to people who match those interests so that they are more likely to engage with your post. Another thing that happens because of this is that, so another option that Facebook gives you is audience restrictions. Audience restrictions basically allows you to limit the visibility of the post. So you can exclude the people that to, to exclude the audience to which you don't want to show this particular post. So limit the visibility of your content to specific demographics and prevent a post being seen by certain groups. So just to show you all on the page as well, when you, when you go to the, to the section from where you can publish an update, you see an option of choosing the preferred audience for the post. And from here, you can select the preferred audience by including interests. So let's say if I want my post to reach out to people who are interested in the topic of meditation, I select that. So now Facebook will show this post to people who are interested in meditation. They are more likely to see the post. And if, if, if I choose this option of restricting my audience, so this particular audience that I select will not be shown the content. Now the next is page insights. So as you all know, Facebook provides insights. Every page has insights. So what is insights? Insights is basically analytics. It is, it is basically, uh, it basically gives us data. It basically shows us numbers depending on our performance. And using those numbers or using that data, we can basically optimize our campaign. So there are different page insights that are available and we'll study them one by one. So the first is measure your reach, measure your page reach and post reach and impression. So let's, let's take a look at that. So this is how the likes graph looks like. So this graph basically tells us the net likes and these net likes basically can be used as a rough gauge of how the post content is performing over time. So let me show it on the Facebook dashboard itself. So when you go to the inside section of the page and you click on likes, you get to see how your likes have grown. And you can also see this graph, the net likes graph, which basically shows the number of new likes minus the number of unlikes. Now, what are new likes? New likes can be basically organic likes as well as paid likes. Organic likes are the ones that we get naturally without any paid activity. And paid likes are the ones that we get after doing some kind of Facebook advertisement. Now, the summation of these two organic plus paid basically gives us the likes or the positive likes. And the unlikes are basically people who have unliked your page. Now the summation of these two basically gives us net likes and this graph, this line that you see is the, is the graph of net likes. Now net likes gives us a certain idea as to how our content is performing in general. Now another, another parameter or another data that Facebook provides us is basically reach. So what is reach? What is reach? reach is the number of unique impressions served. That is how many people saw your content. Okay, the, the, the word unique here is very, very important because this reach talks about different people. It does not talk about the same people and hence this, this reach number is the total number of people who saw the content. So now let me go back to the dashboard and show you how reach looks like. Right, so there is, there is post reach. So the number of people who people your post was served to. 
so the unique number of people your post was served to now in this reach in this reach graph there are there are two columns so there are two colors one is organic so the right, lighter orange stands for organic and the darker orange stands for paid so if you can see there is an organic reach and then there is also a paid reach which has been depicted by the by the darker orange color then the second matrix that we can look at is the reaction comments and shares that our posts are getting and depending on those on these insights we can basically emulate those type of posts so let's understand this so when we go to the post section we get to see the different types of posts that we have made and then we can see how many people responded with clicks reactions and more and we can also see view we can also view the types of post right so we can we can measure the engagement against the type of the post now the posts that are performing well should ideally be boosted so that their organic result can be amplified so let me show it on the dashboard as well so in the post section i'll click on post types and as you can see these are the different posts the photo post video post link post status post and a shared video the reach of all of those types of posts and also the clicks and the engagement of those types of posts the third is understanding the page sorry understanding the people who like your page and engage with your posts so in the people section you can understand which audience has liked the page or the audience that your page has reached out to the audience that has engaged the page and we can also check the the demographic info like age gender and location so again i'll show this to you on the dashboard so as you can see this this num these numbers are available to me so out of the total uh, so right now i'm the on, on the fan section so how many are the how many of the total fans what is the percentage who are women the percentage who are men and then also the age age wise distribution so what is the gender and their age wise distribution that is shown and it also shows us so fr from out of the total fans how many are from india so basically country wise distribution so there is india there is usa there is uae bangladesh etc then there is city wise distribution so how many fans come from which cities and then there is also language wise information that is available for us to see similar data is available for people reached and people engaged as far as as well as our followers of the page now another thing that is shown to us is basically the time when our be our fans come online so we can understand their their demographics we can understand the time of the day in which they come on which they come online at which they come online and you can also see the day wise distribution of the or the or those days in the week when most of the fans are coming on facebook so this this graph is available in the post section and here you can see the info you can see the day wise distribution of the people coming online you can also see the time wise distribution in the day when people are coming online now these two graphs can be studied and the posting frequency can be determined based on the numbers that these two graphs are telling us so you can you can choose to post your update on the days when most of the fans are online and also the time in the day when most of the fans are online the next is learn more about your audience including geography demographics lifestyle purchases behavior and more now we can also get to know more about our audience by looking at the actions that the audience is taking so there is an actions on page uh, there is an actions on page section in the insights section it tells you how many get direction clicks you have got how many phone number clicks you have got how many website clicks you have got and how many call to action button clicks you have got so basically by looking at these actions we can understand what the audience is most interested in yeah and it also gives us an insight whether we should add more information on our page so on the dashboard when you go to actions on page you get to see this graph which basically tells you the the number of clicks that are, that the uh, that the users have done on these particular for these particular actions and the last two so monitor what's working and not working on your page so supremely important because we have to know where our efforts are going so facebook insights allow us to do that 
and we can make decisions about the best ways to connect with our audience. So let's try to understand these now. So what content and post types are working? Yeah. So when we go to the post section, we can get to see individual posts, the type of the post, the targeting of the post, the reach of the post and engagement. So we can try to figure out a pattern. We can just look into the kind of posts that the audience is connecting well with and we can try to build more posts around, around that particular type. So when you go to the insights section and when you go to posts, this is where you can get to see all of those parameters. So right from the type of the, the, the date on which the post was published, the actual post, the type of post, the targeting, if any, the reach and engagement. So you can observe a pattern and you can figure out which ones are the more performing posts. All right. So these are, these are a few insights that you can use to optimize the performance of your page. Okay. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is boosting posts, which allows us. So boosting basically allows the post to reach to a wider audience. So how to do that is what we're going to take a look at right now. So under every post, you will see that there is an option of boost post. So it, like I mentioned, boost post basically allows us to reach more people. How do we do that? Or rather why we should do it firstly, let's understand that. So the, the organic reach of the post is usually very, very limited. It, it typically reaches out to only a certain amount of audience, but boosting the post allows the post to reach to a wider audience. And you can also do some, you, you can also set the targeting filters so that the post reaches out only to a relevant audience. So boosting posts will increase the chance of your post showing up on the news feeds of your target audience, increasing the opportunity for you to engage with your customers. So how do you boost your post? So like I mentioned, underneath a, a post, you will see a button known as boost post. And when you click on the boost post, you get the option of boosting the post, you get the option of targeting, you get the option of budgeting and the other required details. So typically there are already, there is audience that you have to select. So either people who like your page or people who like your page and their friends as well, or people who you, who you have chosen through targeting. So you can also target people. So I'll just show it to you on the dashboard in a couple of minutes. Then the budget and the duration. So for, for what is the budget that you're willing to invest and for how long do you plan to do this boost post and then lastly the payment details so which payment account which ad account you are going to use for boosting this post so this is the page so as you scroll down you see different posts and beneath every post you will see that there's a button from where you can boost the post and when you click on boost post you get to see the preview of the post, the desktop preview, the mobile preview. Yeah, and then you can choose the audience. So these are the saved audiences. You can also choose the audience through targeting. So you can, when you click on edit, you can use different targeting filters. So you can choose different audiences based, you can target different audiences based on their gender, age, location and, and demographics, interest, behaviors, etc. Yeah, then you can target people who have liked your page, people who like your page and their friends, and these are the audiences that I've already created. Then you can choose the budget and the duration. So for how long do you want to boost this? And what is the amount of, what is the investment that you're willing to make to, in order to boost this post? Depending on the, depending on the total budget that you include here, the estimated people that you can reach to this post, that number changes. And lastly, the payment, the, the, the payment a section where you can choose the account, the ad account through which you want to boost this particular post. So what happens when you boost your post? So basically boost posts needs to follow. Firstly, in order to get approved, they need to follow all Facebook ad policies. So when you click on boost post, when you give the order to Facebook, Facebook team will ensure that Facebook team will check if, if the, if the policies are being followed. So there will be a review process and after which the Facebook, if the review, if the, if the policies have been followed, the Facebook team will approve it. And when your audience engages with your post, their friends will see their interaction, which will increase the number of people who will learn more about your business. So boosting post basically gives you an opportunity to reach out to wider audience. And when that wider audience interacts with your post, 
there is a chance that even their friends will be able to see that interaction. So your objective of interacting with more and more people is thus achieved by boosting post. However, boosting a post or any paid activity for that matter is not just it's not just about creating the ad, but it's also about optimizing the optimizing that particular initiative. So when you go to the insights uh, section, when you go to the promotion tab, you will see that uh, you will see the, the kind of promotions, the different types of promotions that you are doing so far. And our job is to look at how they are performing and optimize their performance so that we get the most out of this particular investment. So a few tips regarding boost post. So boost post is available on the pages app. So Facebook page manager app on, on Android and iOS basically allows you to boost your post. So you can use that to do. You can use that particular option to boost the post. So second is test what works and scale up when you see results. So test different types of posts and see which, which uh, post the audience is, is connecting well with. And thirdly, use page insights and ad reports to determine which post to boost for maximum impact. So you can see, you can select the posts that are, that are performing really, really well organically. And you can choose to boost those posts for maximum impact. Now other page features that we want to look at. So reviews. So as you all know, now the users can review your page. And they can also rate your page. What this does is that it builds credibility. So because when a, when a new user comes to your page and when he sees a positive or a negative review, that impacts his decision of interacting with you or even buying from you. Hence, it is good from a business standpoint to have maximum number of positive reviews and a really good rating for the page. You have to allow visitors to review this page. You have to select this option of allowing visitors to review the page only then can users review and rate your page. So ensure that this particular option has been enabled. Now, other thing that you can do is, is drive action through a call to action button. Now, what is a call to action button? A call to action button is that button which appears just below the cover photo of the page. And it's a customizable button, which means that you can select what action uh, the user will take after the user clicks on that particular button. So you can actually define the action. So the call to action button at the top of your page makes it easy for your customers to take the desired action. So what can be the desired actions? So all of these. So call now, book now, contact us, send message, use application, play game, and so on and so forth. So like I said, it depends on what action you want your customers to take after they click on that particular button. The call now, send message, and contact us buttons will allow your customers to reach your business immediately without leaving Facebook. So now I'll show you on the page where that button is located. So this is the call to action button. Currently it has been set at send message, but you can always edit this button. Another thing that you can do is keep your page clean by blocking words. So Facebook in the settings, settings tab allows you to do page moderation in the, in the general section of the settings tab. There is a page moderation section where you can include a few words. So all the, all the comments or all the posts which have those words in them will be automatically marked as spam. So instead of you manually uh, looking out for such content and reporting as the content for spam, instead of that, if, if any of those words that you have included here, if they appear in any of the post or the comment done by user, that particular post or comment will be automatically marked as a spam even without your, even without you having to take any action. Just below the option of page moderation, there is an option of profanity filter. This profanity filter basically allows you to set different degrees of profanity. So you can keep it off, you can keep it medium and you can keep it strong. Now this, this profanity filter basically works on the, the most commonly blocked words on Facebook. So Facebook has its own algorithm, which decides the, the working of this profanity filter. It typically depends, like I mentioned on the, on the most blocked words on, on Facebook. So if those words appear again, Facebook profanity filter will kick in and the, the comment or the post will be reported as spam. So just a quick review and wrap up. 
we started with the first topic was you know why do we need a facebook page for our, for our brand or for our business then the second was the different types of post formats so we looked at different post formats like a single image like a carousel a video a slide show etc then the third was preferred audiences so how can we set the preferred audiences for our page the fourth was page insights page insights was all about how facebook insights help us to understand our initiatives help us to understand the effectiveness of our initiatives and make the necessary changes in our strategy and execution then we looked at boosting posts so boost post is basically a feature provided by facebook where we can, where our post can reach out to a wider audience and the last is the other pair page features where we looked at reviews profanity filters etc you can always continue your learning with facebook blueprint so that's it for today thank you guys